All hell, if you have race pride and love your race, join the Moral Science Temple of America and become a part of this divine movement. Then you will have power to redeem your race because you'll know who you are and who your forefathers were. Because where there's unity, there's strength. Together we stand and divided we fall. Come, good people. Because the prophet know what you all need sent to redeem this nation from mental slavery, which you now have need each and every one of you who think that your conditions can be better. This is the field open to strong men and women to uplift the nation and take your place in the fairs of men. If the European and other nations are helping him, why not you? It is your problem. The Negro problem is being solved only as it can, and that is through the Moorish National Divine Movement. If you have a nation, you must have a free national name in order to be recognized by this nation as an American citizen. This is what was meant when it was said, Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and all these things will be added unto you. At this time, I would like to recite the Moorish American prayer, the strength and the source from which I draw my strength. Allah, the Father of the universe, the Father of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Allah is my protector, my guide, and my salvation by night and by day through his holy prophet, Drew Ali. Amen. First, I'd like to give honor to the open mic here, Portland Media, for giving us this opportunity to be able to come before you, our Portland listening audience, to talk about some issues. Today, we are blessed again to have in our midst an angel and a giant, Bruce Bashar, to come to you today. We're going to talk about some issues because we have a special election that's coming up. And this special election is dealing with the school board. And if you remember one time on Bruce Bashar's show, we was talking about some subject matters. And by talking about the subject matter, certain curriculums at that time, they took out of the school. So right now what we want to do, we want to talk to Brother Bashar because I got my stuff in the mail. We have a special election and I got mine in the mail and Drew Ali told us to vote. He told the Moorish Americans to vote. He even told us to fly the American flag because we are citizens of this government. And everybody that's a citizen, see, when you talk about granted privilege, when you talk about civil rights, and you talk about human rights, but civil rights is a non-political issue. Civil rights are not even an issue that you can carry before the United Nations. And if you don't call yourself who you are, if you don't answer up by name and principle, then you have no rights that a citizen is bound to respect. So my brother Bruce got a lot of stuff here today, and I couldn't wait for this show to come on at 6.30 so you could hear this giant speak. When Jesus was with the disciples at the Last Supper, whenever you see no plates on the table, all the plates was empty. And why was that? Because he fed them food for thought. So at this time, the, the table is fixed, and we're ready to eat. And right now, <laughs> we'll call the one that's fixed in the plate, Brother <laughs> Bruce Bashar. Oh, man, it's, it's, you know, it's really a pleasure being on your show, uh, the, giving me the opportunity, if you will, like you said, through PCM and whatever. But, but again, your show, giving me an opportunity to talk to your audience about why it's so important to get out and vote. Uh, it's so important to get out and vote because that has been basically the, the, the major ingredients, if you will, towards making the right gumbo. <laughs> I put yes, it sir. in that particular fashion. Yes, but the fact of the matter is it's very, very important that one gets out and vote. So so my message today is uh, if we're going to have this discussion between the two of us, is that your right to vote in the state of Oregon in this particular special election for Multnomah County, and, and they're doing this all throughout the state, but in, the, in Multnomah County, you, 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 your right to vote is that it comes by mail. It comes to you personally. Right. And right. You, it, it makes it very convenient as opposed to going out and standing in line and this and that. It goes here. This is a vote by mail state. And, that's, and you need to know that. And so having that, if you will, now that you've got, you got the information and this, that, and the other, now you need to know how to vote. You, and, and, and the definition of how to vote, one, you're paying for it at the end of the day, and, 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 uh, and it had to respond to what your needs are. Very, very important, you know what I mean? Because if, if you're being taxed in some cases, uh, and like this particular one right here, there's a bond measure that's there, and if you, if you got, the, got the American dream and bought your, got yourself a home or in the process of buying one or whatever, 
or, or selling one, the fact of the matter is you're paying you're paying that that's that bond measure. You basically you, your rent is being increased if you want to put it that way. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And then there's just so much you can afford, especially as you get on the on the on the end of the deal and you're retiring and whatever you got so much money you and whatever and so boom that this could have some impact. So it's very important that you know what you're voting for, and it's not about just pretty faces. And this, that, and the other. It's about, hey, you look at the bottom line first. Then then you can go back, if you will, and kind of get how did they get to that particular point. Okay? There's a reason for everything. So, like like you said, this is this is this is a booklet that's again, that's mailed at, to everybody uh, it, it, within this particular district, Multnomah County. And uh, and everybody gets a copy of this, and in there there's a the, 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 it sort of just define uh, who is running for office. To find the bond measure, it just just you know just basically give you an overview of everything. Very important. Give you the background of people, this, that, and the other. Now, the reason why, and then and, and understand, this is not trying to be anti to any of these folks who are running to off for office. The fact of the matter is, I, I give them a lot of respect just to the mere fact that they filed to run for office. I've run for office. It's it's, it's not an easy task running for office. In fact, the real task comes once you get elected. Right. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Now the key is that once you get, while you're running, you might be able to get some support. And the people feel that, well, we have control, and you will do as we tell you, the one who got the money. But realistically, in today's world, once you get elected, you got to represent the people. That's right. Now, because we're so well-versed in technology and, and the like and and even though you, we got newspapers, we got TV, we got radio, we got word of mouth. I mean, we just got a lot of, everybody's involved. So when you run for office, whether you're a Republican or Democrat, you say, well, I'm a Republican, and if you didn't vote for me because you was a Democrat, then I don't have to answer. No, it didn't work that way. Once you're elected, you 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 represent all the folks. Right. And that's the way it is, okay? So so what we're gonna talk <coughs> about today is just that that's exactly what we're talking about, but we, we're gonna take something very specific. In, in Multnomah County, Portland Public School is probably one of the is one, it, it is the largest school district in the state of Oregon, and it's a very it's a very important school district, and it has all kinds of challenges, if you will. Uh, it, it's been also noted where where the, the, the where blacks live in Oregon, the majority of blacks, majority of black, a number, great number of, of blacks live in the Multnomah County area, i.e., what you hear all the time is about Portland, Oregon, and when you hear Northeast Portland. That's basically where a number of African Americans live, but they're they're spreading out now. They they're going to Gresham, and as a result of this, there's this, this whole thing called gentrification now, and a lot of folks are being pushed out that way to east on the east side of town, and that's Gresham, North uh, East Portland, and then the like. So, <clears throat> but it, but but the bottom line is that Multnomah County has always been identified as that's where the majority of blacks go to school. Okay, that's that's that's, that's it. So that's a very important piece. Now, if they're coming out with a bond measure, they're saying, "Look, we're gonna we're gonna go on and I'm just being in layman's term. Yeah, we 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 need to go on and fix these schools up and and uh, build new schools and for earthquake and and the 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 they're, 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 they're running down, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, it's one thing to say that, but then I always ask the question, "Well, what you, what did you do to just keep up what you had?" <laughs> See, and I can still remember the time that we fought. Uh, I was part and parcel of, a, of, 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 of an effort to keep the custodians in Portland Public Schools. Uh, Portland Public School was had probably the the most hired black folks in the state in that arena, and many of these folks had got gotten to management positions and and were looking at retirement and whatever. But their whole definition is that they were more in many cases they were more important than the teachers. They made sure that the roof was on and they wouldn't sure. leak. That's they right. made sure that the waters were clear. There was no lead in the water. And we just went through that whole program. My point is that they, uh, we, we, we went through a whole bunch of light and just that getting up early in the morning and making sure that the school was warm when the kids got there and the teachers got there, making sure that drugs weren't all over the place, making sure that the uh, that, that, that kids weren't being jumped on or whatever and outsiders coming. So it's a, so, but, but that particular group of custodians were handling all of this. And all of a sudden, we, we, we got into an arena where, where there was an effort to get rid of them, to get rid of them. They were part of a union called SEIU, 
uh, and and uh, and and so what, just making it very short because we want to get in this other piece. But the, this SEIU union, all of a sudden, uh, was able to take uh, in all due respect undocumented uh, undocumented workers, uh, in all due respect uh, uh, Mexican Americans, Me Mexicans, if you will, and got them involved in that process. And at the end of the day, they got rid of them. And then I got in involved in the process, and we fought to keep them back, keep them there. But 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 it changed the whole lay of the land. So what I mean by changing the lay of the land, all of a sudden, <laughs> the yards weren't being cut, the windows weren't being glazed. You know what I mean? We, we had problems. We had we had uh, we had problems on the grounds. I'm glad you said that. Let me let me cut in for a minute. Yeah, good on. No I'm problem. looking at your paperwork. Yes. And I'm looking at your paperwork, and I don't see Afro Americans nowhere. That's right. Now. I'm from Washington, D.C. Right. I say this all the time. Right. During elections, you could look outside and see people two and three blocks down that, that in, in lines right. waiting to vote. Right. Because everybody is voting for the person that, that the issues that's right. conducive right. to our growth and right. development. Right. That's only 2% of us here. Right. Well, I have a, a, a following on this show here. Right. So now we have a special election. Right. You know, we've been over on North Wims and we've been everywhere where the Afro Americans are so-called Afro-American, there's only a few of us here. Right. So now if we go to vote, we are told to vote because we're citizens of this government. Right, right. Who would you suggest, if I had to suggest somebody that I would give my vote to, who would you suggest? Now, I'm not hung up in color right, right. because the spirit has no color. Right, 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 right. But I'm talking about moral principles and character. So who would you suggest that my Portland listener would vote because they might have the issues and it might do things that will be for the growth and development of us. You, you, you make a good point. And if I, like I say, I'm going to net this out and get right down to that particular point. Yes, sir. And that is, that is, there are a number of people that are, are running for, for the Portland School Board. Okay. And then again, there's, there's, a, there's a, a bond measure that's out there also too. Now. What you mean by bond measure? Bond measure. They're going to assess property owners to build the buildings. They got to raise the money, if you will to build the building. It's like a tax, if you will. It's going to raise your rent, if you will, to build the school buildings and uh, the whatever, and then basically change the, uh, the pipes in the schools. They had a big lead problem, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So they got their, they got their issues, and then they're telling you what the issues are and why, we're, why we need the money from you to, 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 to correct this situation. So then I'm saying the position that wants you to take, in terms of how to vote for that situation, you got to know what you're voting for. But your money is limited. That's right. Okay. So when they send an ad out to you, they allow to send it in the form of an ad, or they'll basically send you a copy of how to vote, basically give you a, a definition they of, of what a little, little insight of what the deal is, and then they'll send you this and they'll kind of give you a little brief insight of yes, what's sir. happening, whatever. Yes, sir. So so that so you got to know what you what you're getting, okay? So when you get so when you get that one, no, when you get that, you, you get you get your, your voters there. That's right. You get your, your, your that, that's your ballot. Your ballot is in there. Now, once yeah. you get there, you get that ballot. Now, when that ballot is in here, this is what that ballot looked like. And you got some other little yeah. paraphernalia, optional ballot, secret sleeve and stuff. But yeah, that's all the enclosure stuff and whatever. But this is the main one right here. Okay. You know what I mean? And then they basically said everything that you're going to be voting for. They got the they got the candidates' names and this, that, and this. They don't have their background. So you go to their background with the voters' pamphlet, which they sent you. Okay. Okay, they do that part. Okay. okay. Now, once you've done that, then you vote accordingly. Okay. But now, but in addition to that, the candidates, if they got some money, they will send you brochures. Yeah. And yes, promote sir. their own situation. Yes, okay. Yes, so, but you got to be able, now. These, this, you, you getting this for free, and you also getting this for free. Mm -hmm. The candidates have to pay to get this, mm -hmm. this done aspect of it. And and the bonding thing, the same thing. There's some interest folks, folks who're going to be doing the building and stuff like that. A lot of times they're part of part of the lobby and the ad. They want, mm -hmm. they, they got to eat, right? Okay. So they want to build the building. Okay? okay, but at the end of the day, it's about the kids. Yes, sir. It's about the kids. You yes, see? sir. So you got to look for it. You know what I'm the kids. Is anybody right. talking about those that's incarcerated? Well, in, in all due respect, uh, no. <laughs> I'll just be right up front with you. Yes, sir. I mean, they're trying to change some of the laws, you know, for felony this, that, and that. When a person gets out and this, that, and that, which is a good thing to do, because as far as I'm concerned, I'm still coming from the old, the old school of if you do the, if you do the time, if you do the crime, and you do the time, you should be whole again. You know, uh, in D.C., Temple Number 1, Yes, we went to city council 
and we had to vote. I was one of the ones that was there. We voted, you know, on, on, when, when you go look for a job. Right, 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 it right. It says, have you been incarcerated? Right, 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 right. And we voted. I mean, we went to city council, was able to take that off. Yeah, 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 because right, once right. you done did your time, then, I mean, you should be free. Right, 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 right. You know, right, you done right. served the right, time right, that right, you're supposed right, to right, do. Right, right. So, you know, they're working on that and, and, state. And in all due respect, they should clearly really work at that piece. Because in all due respect, if they have to do more time, just go on and do it. But make sure that the person is whole when they get out of here. Yeah, but I'm saying when they got out, it was still, they asked you that no, question. I know that. I'm just saying that shouldn't be there. That's what I'm trying to say. That's right. They should take care of it while they're still in there. If they have to have a couple of days, but you don't have to worry about that from that point on. But it had to be in the city. See, D.C. did that. Like other cities are doing I, it I know that, too. but my point is an issue across the country. Yes, sir. We got to right. deal with it because that means that you, you got the freedom to move anywhere you want to. That's right. But if you can't live in this other state because of that, then that restricts you, sir. You might have issues that you need to get out of that area. See what I mean? So that's an issue that we need to talk about. Okay. That's another show, in all due respect. Because I remember you talked about the, the schooling and the training oh, yeah. for people yeah. just in conservation. Yeah. That, so that, if that, I'm that. giving somebody my vote, because I'm just getting it, I don't that's right. know that's right. That's right. too that's much right. about that's right. that. That's why I need you to help guide but, me, but, but that's, because I don't know these people. But a lot of times, people, they don't educate folks about the tools that they get. This is a very important tool. Like I said before, you get the ballot, yeah, I right? Got that. Yes, you got the ballot, <coughs> and then you go through this to find out who this person is. And then there's the resume on what that person is all about. And then they may send you a flyer if they got enough money. Send you a flyer to get, get, basically add, this is who I am, a little bit more about what it is. So that now you got this. But you got to make sure that, that it, it, like say in this particular case here, uh, this is supposed to be the school, right? Okay. About the bond measure aspect of it. And and my wife asked me, she said, honey, she said, because she, she, gets, she gets material too. And she said, this this came in the mail. <laughs> yeah. and, and I said, okay. She said, uh, look at it. So I looked at it. So said, oh, because the bond, about the bond measure. No, no, okay. Portland schools. All I see a bunch of kids. And this, that, and the other. She said, did you look at it? What's missing? <laughs> yeah. I said, well, nothing missing. Just a piece of paper telling you to vote for, for, for measure 26-193. Gets the lead out. I think it's a very promotional piece, very professional. It costs a lot of money to put this in the mail, right? That's right. That's right. And she said, honey, because see, we got grandkids in Portland Public Schools. So grandma said to me, my grandkid is not shown in the, in the ad. That's right. There's no black kids in this ad. Okay. That's what she was making, making the point up to me. Okay. And so I'm sitting there saying, well, now, okay, there's no black kids in the ad. I'm saying, well, 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 if my kids are not in there, why should I be paying? <laughs> right. But my point is that the point that got out in my head, we've just gone through this gentrification thing among blacks. That's the perception that blacks are being gentrified out of northeast Portland, right? So now we're gentrifying black kids. See? It's not, it's not rabble-rousing or nothing like that. That's real. You got you, you to gotta be cognizant of the fact when you send something out, we're trying to build a, a, a simulation. We're trying to get people together. We're not talking about dividing folks. So the, so the, the photo should, 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 should talk to that. It's an educational system for all kids. Then it, then it counters some of that divide that we go through. Because racism and all this, that, and the other. But in fact, people get angry. Grandma got upset. She said, where's my grandkid? How are they going to treat him or her? See, so that's a very, so you need to know what you get in the mail. And the people who send it need to understand that it's about kids. It's not about buildings. First, so check this stuff out before. And when you, and when you look at this, this piece, it says the Oregonian supports it. It says the Huffington Post, Oregon Public Broadcasting, and, you know, and very reputable kinds of entities. But so I'm suggesting to them, before they, before they send this out, make sure you sign off on it. Make sure that, that you're supporting it, you're endorsing it. Make sure that it's right. Maybe the people, just, maybe whoever put it together, they just went on and said, okay, I'll print what you'd send me. But, but it's still about kids. And, and you know, this is very important. Very important. That's our future. So that's one. Now, as far as candidates are concerned, same thing. You know, I've got two candidates here who happen to be running for the school district. Okay. And they're very, very, very respectful, two, both very respectful individuals. Uh, one in, in, in here is Rita Moore for Portland Schools. There is her photo, right? Okay. She's running for school district. And then, naturally, she's got her total resume in this, right? Okay. And this you right? know her? Well, I, well, let's put it. I know her through this. I don't <laughs> okay. know her yet. I plan the interview. You okay. know, I, do plan. I just took these two. 
okay. because people are familiar with Portland Public School and the okay. board. Okay. okay. In fact, in fact, Steve Buell is going to be leaving his seat, and these two people are running, and then one other person named uh, uh, John Sweeney is running. But I took the two, two very uh, ones who had the money, if you will. The other guy couldn't even afford uh, to put uh, put a, put an ad in the voters pamphlet. You get my point? But my point is, what I'm saying to you is this. I don't understand that. Now, here, take this. now here she's running for school board, right? You see a photo, right? Yeah. Okay. You turn it over, right? Yeah. Okay. And you see a a, a couple, right? Yeah. An yeah, older couple, two white old, older couple, right? And she's talking to them, right? Okay. But again, does it represent the school? There should be more pictures on it. <laughs> pictures of kids. Are you getting my drift? Yes, sir. The kind of kids that are going to be going to that school. A diverse kid. Yes, sir. Group. Of everybody kind. You know what I mean? And the same thing here. Maybe put some little color in there. Maybe, maybe put a, a, a couple other seniors in middle, maybe middle class or whatever. But but several families, if you will. But you always talk about Portland being white. You use that term. Yeah, I know. But, more than anybody. But, so. I'm, trying, but I'm, I'm trying to educate. Okay. See, again, we need to educate. So I'm just saying, they may have had all the good intentions. And I, I know she's a very good, solid person. Okay. But the fact of the matter is, when you send something like out there, you got to still go back to kids. Just like this thing right here. Make sure if you got some, you got the kids picture, but who's going to be doing the pad? Yes, sir. So if you're going to put some older folks, people going to pay, and the voters, put that in the ad too. Yes, sir. Say, look at yo, everybody's paying. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. So, so, so that's one right there. And here's this young lady. She's the same thing. Here she is. She's got her picture right up there front. But again, the kids are not front. But she does have some kids here. Yes, sir. Diverse. They're, they're diverse kids. You got me? This is supposed to be diverse kids. They all they're all kids now. Now I see I see okay, fine. You got you got me. So my, you got that diverse aspect of it, right? So so that's that's a that's a good piece. But you gotta be able to represent them. Now here's a here's here's a, a graduate, if you will. But again, too, if you're gonna do if you're gonna do one graduate on one, you gotta put some other graduates getting a diploma. Because right. perception-wise, black folks don't get a don't don't don't, don't graduate. Because i.e. perception of Portland Public Schools, it has the highest failure rate in the state. See, so you want to so you want to make sure that you you show that motivation to the parents out there who are going to be voting and whatever, and to the kids. Well, gee, I can be somebody too. I can be just like that person. But if I don't see something visually to to show me. Then I, I say, oh, what the heck? I don't need to be graduated for what? I don't need nothing. So, so it's important that you know that you have this kind. And then by doing it this way, when you get this material in the mail, you put this on this one side, and you and when you look at it, and if it doesn't relate in totality, you put it over here. And the ones that do relate, you put it on this side. And the ones that don't relate, you put it over here. And then guess what you do with these? You can either call these people. Or further, you call them, or try to go through the newspaper. But if they don't relate, and they're on something that they personally put out, then that tells me a little bit about where their focus is. See what I'm saying? Because I want them to concentrate on the kids, my grandkid. I want my grandkid to learn something. Let me ask you something. Do we have town hall meetings before the election? I remember you. We had one with you. Yeah. And, you know, to talk about the issues so you can talk to the people and bring them in from the community. Do well, these people have town hall meetings? Before well, what they, they do is that a lot of times the newspapers do their own thing. They'll send you out a, you know, that kind of a deal. And sometimes they'll do a town hall meeting. But a lot of times what they will do, uh, they really don't go according to Hoyle. If, like I said, with 15 people running, as far as I'm concerned, and then as far as I'm concerned, the town hall meeting should always be the 15. But they cut it back. Say, well, if you're not responsible enough, if you don't have enough money to buy an ad or this, that, and other, well, we're not going to do it. Or the top I, four, I want, I top want to two, or top three. Again, though. But what they're not doing here in Portland, yeah. that they're doing, especially on the East Coast, yeah. when someone running for office, right. there's certain money that's appropriated. Mm. We 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 stood go to door to door to put these flyers. Right. They would give you fifteen to twenty dollars to ten dollars an hour. Mm. I'm talking about each, each uh, uh, candidate yeah, right, right. has people working with them because they have money that's appropriated. Mm -hmm. Money is appropriate. You just ain't getting it. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, well we did have voter on election here. What you mean? Well, meaning <laughs> the candidates got monies. Okay. They get to, to run that campaign. That's what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, they run the campaign. Okay. But unfortunately, it just wasn't ready. I mean, there were some things that they needed some adjustments. 
I was very much involved in the process aspect of it. That's another story in itself aspect of it. But the fact of the matter is they just didn't have the right plan. The plan just wasn't right. And, and, and as a result of that, it really, it, it really shed a, a very negative light to the whole deal, even to the voters' standpoint. So now uh, one of the commissioners, uh, it, 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 I don't know the name right off the bat, but, but she's trying to bring it back to the table. She's the only, she's the only woman commissioner, city council member. She's trying to bring it on the table of voters on election. And this way candidates would get the money and then uh, they keep big money out of the deal and this, that, and the other. But there's always a ways of doing it the right way. You got my point? Yes, Should have done the right way the first time. Yes, sir. But they didn't. And then it's going to be hard to get the voters to buy off on, quote, spending money that didn't work the first time. And they're not willing to discuss it. That's the other thing. See, they're not discussing it. I was part of that process. I got kind of raked over the coal for just sharing my thoughts. As a result, I got out of it. So, so my point is that that needs to be discussed more. But no, that 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 that's being reconsidered. I just hope they have more of a discussion uh, with with that issue. Well, they haven't yet, but hopefully they will. I think she's going to introduce that here very shortly. That's a very important piece. Okay, yes, but but like I said, voting is a responsibility. So when you get this document here in the mail, make sure you read it, and make sure you compare the notes with your voters' pamphlet that you got. To find out, you, you got a name, and they tell you what what to vote. Don't just just start sticking the name because I've seen that. You, you see what I'm saying? I've seen that. You see what I'm saying? So that's why I'm going to ask you to help me, because I, I don't know none of these people. Well, that's, that's why that's why I gave it to you in a universal way. I've said, yes, well, okay, sir. the way you do, you help you. yourself, I heard right, you. right, right. You see what I'm saying? Because you don't know them, but you you can get some sense of who they are right here. And then the other thing, they normally supposed to give you a, a phone number or email address or whatever, and you can email them and get some response. We're going to do that but, because but, I think we're going to try to talk to interview, all yeah, of them. Yeah, interview them. Yeah. And have, tell them to come yeah, by for a yeah, town hall yeah. meeting. In fact, I'll, I'll make sure that when I call the people to come on mine, I'll, I'll tell them to call you. Yes, sir. See what I'm saying? Yes, sir. To be on your show and tell them yes, about sir. the time aspect of it. Yes, sir. So these are some very serious times right now. And I'm talking about Portland, Oregon right now, okay? Uh, kids, it's very, very important. And so uh, we need to know, and then that bonding measure is heavy. Now, you know, that's a lot of money. And when you're going to ask a person who, who's single, uh, who don't have any kids in school, and say, we want you to pay too. I mean, you pay for roads and this, that, and that. But, but my point is that, okay, but if, I, if, if little Johnny or little Susie is, is not graduating and then I'm mm -hmm. challenging the teachers and all this other, you know what I'm saying? So you really have to do, we really have to do a job. It's going to take all of us. Working hard. It's one thing the developers, the contractors, they just build the building, take the money, and go. They don't have to worry responsibility. And depending upon who's who's monitoring it, and if they wrote the contract right, if the roof li roof leak leak, they'll come back and fix it. But if you don't know what you're doing, the roof is leaking. You got to go on and get another contractor to put another roof on. Yes, sir. And yeah. they do that a lot of time, don't they? Yeah, see, we, well, my, my mind is jumping. You talking and my mind is jumping because I was <laughs> thinking about Marin Barrett. Yeah. And my mind be jumping because... Tell me who Marin is real quick, like Marin. Marin, well, Marin. Marin, Marin Barrett was a mayor of Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C., right. I and remember uh, him. he well, went well in because a girl tried to set him up and he got locked up. Okay. But when he came home, yeah. we put him back in the office. Yes, right. And the reason why he went back in the office because he might have had some weaknesses, but his mind on the issues... Of those of African right. descent, and he, the elders and the senior citizens, the same thing you and I are talking about. That's where he worked. That's why right. they put him. That's why they put him back in office. Yeah. But what I was telling you, when he was in office, uh, they had an organization in D.C. called "Don't Smoke the Brothers and Sisters." Mm -hmm. You know, keeping violence down. Okay. And what they would do, uh, election time. Yeah. They would get buses and cars, put people on the buses and in the cars, and take them to the polls. That's what we're going to have to do here. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to run for office the next time, this time right now, we to start having these town hall meetings, right? Yeah, town right, hall I'm meetings I'm and let you come in and talk about what you, your issues that you have that can be conducive. See, I'm not hung up in color. Right, but right, we right. need somebody that got right. some kind of right, color. Right, 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 right. right you know, because right, right. most of the brothers or the sisters, you know, they run for office, they put somebody under you, and when they put them under you, then They're you gone. Through. They're gone, yeah. Yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah. So they know what they're doing. So being that we're talking about politics, you are the few that's here in Portland 
that's talking about it, and then you ain't changing. Yeah. You know, sometimes you find reactionaries. You know, today there's certain issues and they're mad about, but every day I meet you, all you talking about politics, the issues. Mm -hmm. And this is what we need to try to do. We need to try to get somebody up in there that's conscious that will be able to handle our issues because I talked about the institution. The reason why I talked about the institution, that's another form of genocide. Yeah. It's only 2% of us here, but it's, uh, we we 95% of the institution. Yeah, yeah. Another yeah. form of genocide. Yeah. So yeah. these are things that we have to do so we can provide jobs right. for them. Right, right, right. Well, and you, I see all that in you. Well, you know, but at the same time, when we say you, it's all of us. When I say you, I'm talking I know, about I know that, right. It's yes, all sir. of us and, and across the line, too. But I'm a strong believer, a very strong believer now. We we, 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 made, we, we, we need to take care of our own home. Before we start trying to take care of somebody else's home. That's right. And I'm not taking anything away from these other folks. That's right. But I'm just saying to blacks, I mean, I, I mean I'm mean, i across the board. You know, if you know something, when I'm in the Voters Digest, I'm talking across the board in right. different areas, blah, 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 routine. But when, I, but, but, but when I can come to some a black entity talking to black issues that affect black issues, I'm talking about black issues. I'm not talking about black and brown and... And well, that's why, that's why you don't see nobody in the papers. Yeah. Only 2% of us ain't yeah. nobody talking yeah. about those yeah. issues. But we do, but my point is that, in all due respect, there's some things within our community we have to clean up. That's right. That's right. See, we have two black newspapers. And they should be spending that time talking about black folks, educating them, telling them what to go. Just like I'm talking to you about, they should put a, a, a deal in there, a whole page just devoted on. How you, how to go out and vote? They can't do that. No, but but my point that's why that's why that's why I came to you <laughs> because nobody yeah. nobody's doing it. You yes, and Cecil, another show that I just did. Yes, sir. Right. I'm, yes, sir. That's what we that's what we should be doing. Yes, sir. In fact, the newspaper guys, the publishers should be on the show. That's right. Being interviewed like a Meet the Press. That's right. You know what I'm saying? That's right. But from Portland, Oregon. Yes, sir. You got me. Yes, I'm sir. I'm not talking about taking an article off the internet <laughs> and put putting it in the paper. I'm talking about real world stuff with visuals. Yes, sir. You see what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Say, look here, tune in, um, tune in on cable access, uh, i.e., for this show. Yes, sir. The publisher is going to be here, or certain people are going to be here. Please tune in. Yes, sir. And then say, well, okay, fine. You know, tune in, okay. Well, now, what, what do I tell you? Well, we got senior citizen centers around. That's right. Go down to Multnomah County and go to the senior citizen administration. Say, hey, look here. We got one big senior citizen center here on on on, on MLK and and Killingsworth on that corner. Put a big widescreen TV there for lunchtime, because everybody can eat at senior citizen centers. That's right. And play the show. Yes, sir. And it's already recorded, yes, so just play it again. Yes, sir. Because they got the schedule. Yes, sir. And put the schedule out. Yes, sir. Because a lot of those folks who came there to eat can't afford this. The TV can't afford the electric bill. Uh, they got to eat first. That's right. See, so we got to do some creative things. And then, and, and the black newspaper is free. Supposedly they're free, but the bottom line is that the reason some of them say, "Well, gee whiz, I can't get no ad." Well, <laughs> you you can't be just doing a quickie. You, you got to make sure you get to the people right. that you represent. That's right. You see, you can't. It's like oil and water when it comes to black folks on some stuff. So just hey, let educate people. Who needs being educated by black folk? Let them know, and then at the same time educate black folks how to get out of this, 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 these issues that we're into. Discuss those issues. I don't give a damn if it's crime or whatever, family, whatever, LBGT, anything. But educate the people, and we got certain responsibility. And those elected officials, same way. I mean, we got a, we got this situation with, with gentrification. Everybody talks about gentrification. Buildings are going up a mile a minute. Once they're built, you can't, a lot of people can't even afford the rent. And then they get shifted out. They're going back east, they're going to East Portland and that's there, and Gresham and the like and whatever. But then where's the elected official? What are they doing about it? I've not heard anything down at the legislature. The legislature just about ready to give it up about any kind of bill that addresses that issue. And we got a we got a gentleman who his name is Lou Frederick, who's here, and he's, he's kind of like in a district that, in all due respect, when, when I was at one point in time the publisher of the Portland Observer newspaper, I saw it. It wasn't, shouldn't be just a northeast Portland area. It needs boundaries. We put boundaries on it. That's right. We got that done. And as a result of that, we, we got the first elected, I mean, from a district where a number of the re residents were black, 
And then, in all, in fact, in all due respect, the first representative from that district was a white guy. Hadn't been a neighbor of mine. His name was Ed Leak. Then, then Margaret Carter came. But the bottom line is that once she got elected, they kept her in Salem. Yeah. She couldn't deal with the issues. Yeah. Because the people who were buying it, <laughs> who got the deal done. See, so we need to look at those kinds of things. And it still wasn't too late to be able to take charge and say, okay, fine. Here are the issues. But that's the responsibility of newspapers or people like us. And I, I come up here and I, I make my statements about what about this. and But then they, they play that divide and conquer. And at the end of the day, well, you know, you know, Bruce, you know, he's that way. And he don't, he don't, he don't really represent the black folk. Well, man, you look in the mirror. You don't even like represent yourself, right. <laughs> let alone black folks. Right. You're an elected official. That's your job, to represent everybody in your district. And it wasn't just black. But the fact of the matter is that the perception is there. So it's important that we I, I, I go right back. We got to take, just like what Marion did. He was focusing on the issues and the solutions in that area. That's where he was. Like you said, there were these other elements that were there, but he was still focused on this. That's why people kept on voting for him. But I'm saying, I'm using you for example. Right now, when is the next election? For man, four more years? Oh, another two years. Two years. Yeah, two, yeah, right yeah, but, now. No, but, no, I'm saying about, about four years. Yeah. If we start about working years, right now, I, I, look, I understand. start taking one month, having a town hall meeting, we can use our place. Okay. Have a town hall meeting once a month. And those that's talking about running for office and the issues that they have, if they come up with that now, by the time that the next election, we have the buses ready and everything. And we're not talking about no color because it don't have no, 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 that's right. You my that's army right. buddy. That, that's right. And then we could, that's who will come. The Buffalo soldiers. Who will come? The veterans. That's yeah. your background. Yeah. Yeah. That's your support. Yeah. Yeah. And you got a man right here ready to run for you right now. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. You yeah. know, so that yeah. thing, they think about it. We could start holding town hall meetings. But at the same time, I want to share with the, the voting public out there. And know that the other folks got to come to the table. I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong. The, yeah, no. the, yeah, no. uh, but, let, but, but, but that's the whole idea is to let them know that. It's not just an I thing. You got my point? That's a very important important piece, like you were saying. I hear you, though. You see what I'm saying? I know you do. But we're going to pass the flyers out to yes. everybody. Yeah. I mean, I go out and pass a thousand of them yes. out a day. But, I, but, I'm just, but I'm just saying we got to get more young folks involved in the process. That's right. We got to teach them. That's why I say I came up with the voting piece aspect of it. Yes, sir. And then all of a sudden we got to put it back into the schools. Yes, sir. And we had civics class and government. Yes, you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. You got me. And and then and then and even though Lou Frederick is sitting there uh, by himself, he's a senator now. We got we got Loretta Smith. She's a county aspect of it. But those folks need to go back to the schools and and talk and deal with some of the issues that are relevant, like the like the like, like the gentrification piece. No one would say anything. Negative one way or the other. If those two individuals, we don't have two, two black officials here locally right now, Loretta Smith from the county, and Lou Frederick. Well, how do they think? Well, but my point is that we gotta tell them. <laughs> we are telling them. See, we are yes, telling sir. them. Yes, sir. See, we are telling them. Yes, sir. Because I know both of them are kind of having some issues, some problems, if you will, but they're elected officials, and they still need to deal with the issues. Yes, sir. And we've got a responsibility on ourselves to seek them out. Say, hey, how you doing? And we want you to talk about the, the gentrification. That's the first start. Okay. Because that's going right now. Okay. Okay, call up who we have. Okay. And then at the same time, okay, after you call them up, then you call the others up. Anybody in the area that's, that's right. voted the office. That's right. And I live in the whole county. That's right. I, I pay taxes. Wherever you pay taxes, to buy, <laughs> that's, that's who. That's right. You say, well, right. anybody elected <clears throat> in that arena, I want you at the table. But I want to talk about gentrification for black folks right over here. <coughs> yes, sir. And then someone said, well, okay, fine, I want to do it for this way. Well, you got all the various papers, right? You got LBG. I mean, everybody's got a group. So unfortunately, it should be a one-stop deal. But in, the, in, but in this particular case with the kids, that's our futures. That's right. 
See, right. the little kids, are, they're, all, they're, they're all together when they're young. And once they get to be hey, over 10 years old, <laughs> it, it, starts, it, it, start, it starts dividing, don't it? Yes, sir. And yet, yes, you said, well, wait, why did it divide? Everybody was happy then. But when that eating starts placing that responsibility, you know, it's a different ballgame. So I, I'm agreeing with you, but at the same time, I said, this is a good start. This is okay. a, it's a real good start, okay. and 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 we, we we like you're doing right now with me, and like I do with you, and like I do my show aspect of it. We're focused. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We, we're focused. I got a, I got a guy coming in tomorrow. I mean next Sunday. His name is Art Robinson. He's running against a, a Congressman DeFazio up in Southern Oregon, and he, he and he's not educated. But if he had the issues, this is the point I'm making. Well, well, we have a well, place that we could come and talk, and Jennifer, K., everything else you have to talk about, right. we could talk about that. And each week, invite more people. I agree. See, and then when you look up, when it's time for election, we got a thousand, ten thousand, twenty thousand people going to the poll to vote on somebody particular. Well, you you hitting it, you hitting it hard. You know, you know, I'm feeling y'all. You know what I mean? Know, you know That's feeling. what we have to do. But, but at we got to put our place, person. Because yeah. see, what's taking place is, say for instance that um, I got a business, and we put you in the office, then we are gonna get all the contracts. Yeah. They ain't yeah. gonna give us nothing. Yeah, that's right. That's right. No, you right. Everybody else getting all the money. <laughs> we only get money to make up the the, the, the buy. They they getting all the money. Yep, 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 yep. yep. And you always tell me we gotta eat. You gotta eat. My stomach growling. You gotta <laughs> Everybody's still is growling. Everybody's still is growling, it, it, especially man. now. You yes, know what I'm saying? So, so no, I, I, I hear you real well. That's why I'm doing the show. That's why I really appreciate we're talking candidly. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? And we're talking candidly. And all due respect, everybody's looking at the show, whites and everybody else. But I'm just saying that sometimes you got to focus on what you know. That's right. And you feel that feeling. That's You're right. not being segregated. You That's just right. say, hey, look, I'm going to take care of this. And then hopefully you will understand where I'm coming from. And then, hey, Bruce is over here. He's taking care of your half. You see what I'm saying? Right. Because you can't, no, no, as one say, no man's an island, and you just can't get vote with, get voted in the office with just black folks in, a, in, the, in, in, in this small entity aspect of it. But if you got the issues intact, and you got a plan and a solution for those issues, you can get elected. But but there's no. the divide. No, 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 no. But I, I agree with plasmarizing ain't gonna come in. No, no. Because all of your issues yep. that you had, yep. we seen people on our brother and yep, everything yep, yep. at the, the DMV talking about your issues. Yep. So what they did, they get you out the way and then put your issues as is their own. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we yeah. call that oh, plasmarizing. Oh, yeah. And you have been plasmarized. Well, so but, they but, take you and do something else but, with but, it. But, but but as you know, when they plasmarize, they ain't doing nothing. They, that's why they have so much problems trying to get reelected. Right. You see what I'm right. saying? I don't have to worry about it. Because I'm here transparently talking about these issues, aspect of it, and I'm always asking the question, "What's on your mind?" Right. If you got a better plan than mine, come on on the show. That's why we're asking the candidates that are there now. But they'll say, "Well, no, you don't like me, or you're a Republican, or you're a Democrat." Hey, wait a minute. You elected to office. Once you get elected to office, you represent. You got to represent the whole the people. people. Ain't, ain't about right. you can be second. No, That's you right. are my employee. That's right. You're not. I'm the employer. That's right. But see, a lot of us don't do that. We figured, you know, you can do personality thing and this, that, and the other. And at the end of the day, we end up, as you say, with nothing. That's right. That's right. We will have nothing, and then fight, and then and then then someone like that start fighting you, and and you ain't got nothing. They ain't got nothing. So right. nothing from nothing leaves what. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So I'm agreeing with you totally, but this is where we start. This is the meet. We started last time around, and you motivated me to get out there and run for mayor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And right up front, with you, I, it's not a funny thing, but I'm just standing right up front. The only money I spent was the filing fee. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we didn't finish at the bottom of the deal. Yes, sir. We finished number four out of 15. Yes, sir. Now imagine if I had the money, but guess what? I didn't get the black paper coming up to me, the black newspapers, putting me in the paper or even interviewing me and saying, Bruce Broussard is running for office. I didn't even get that. Not even the name. Now, I got this because I paid for this to get the, you know what I'm saying, get the name in. And my name was in the ballot. Yes, sir. So I, I mean, and then in all due respect, I didn't get the majority of money, people coming out saying, hey, Bruce, let me, a few of them, you know, a few folks. But I said, well, you know, I'm going to just stick with my deal. But I didn't get no 100000 or $200,000. No. 
You see what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So, and then why, why did that happen? Well, they go to the same folks and say, well, well what do you think about Mr. Broussard? Uh, about this? Oh, no, no, he, he ain't black enough. He, he don't represent the black community. What, what are you talking about? But they, but they don't, they don't say, well, what do you mean? They don't say, well, why don't we call Mr. Broussard and have him sit right there next to you, and then you tell him that. Because we got problems over there. We want to solve the problem. Well, I can handle it. Don't worry about it. Give me the money. And then they get into something that they, they don't have the background for. Right. And then get mad at me <laughs> because they, 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 they can't go back and get it again. And all I'm saying, look, just be proud enough to say, hey, I, I might have messed up, but I'm gonna give a cat a brother a call and, and see what we can do. He's talking. That's what we talk about. Yes, sir. Well, I'm still strongly about that. I'm telling you, we done had town hall meetings, and before the next election, because you got to run again. Yeah. You ain't that old yet. You still a young spring chicken. Well, I'm gonna be young. So you can run again. <laughs> you know, if you <laughs> run again, if we prepare, you know, I said the ground must now, be prepared I, before I, corn be planted. You know, I hear if you. If we plant the word, then you win. I hear you loud and clear. And then you'll be able to help and give jobs to a lot of people who don't have none, man. Because I'm going to tell you something. You know, in D.C., if a European asked me for $10, yes. I said, man, you asking me for money, you should, you could have been the president. <laughs> but here in Portland, man, you got so many homeless European. It's a shame they got all these buildings. <laughs> and they ain't putting them in there. I've seen it all winter. They sleeping yeah. under trees and everything. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. So you know if they don't care nothing about their own, they don't care nothing about me. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, your method of application and the wisdom that I see in you, we can bring Portland together and, 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 and it'll be sustained with jobs for the people. Well, during the interim, since we have a mayor that just got elected, and I, I'm, I'm sort of like uh, pleading for the help a little bit, because the man needs some help. I mean, he's going to be mayor for four years, right? You well, we just wrote him and put your name in the letter. Yeah, but you understand me. But he's there four years. We got a, we got a summer coming. It's going to be tough. Yeah, I mean, we got a lot of people. I mean, you drive around the city right now. The little sun comes out, and you got people coming from all over the country. That's right. Say, hey, this is, this, is, this, is, this is one of those sanctuary cities. We can get in there and we won't. We get all the drugs we want, and, and you see people in the parks just... And using the using the using for the restroom, just right. pissing right over there, and right. throwing garbage over here. Right. Uh, I saw the sheriffs finally picking up some stuff at Delta Park aspect of it, and and you know, and then people just laying on the street, just laying on the street. You go downtown and it's laying, just people just walking around. And, I'm glad you said that. I mean, like it's, Delta Park. Yeah. Delta Park. We go on those parks yes. and pass out flyers yes. and tell them about a town hall yes. meeting that we have because yes. we need to talk about issues yes. and give these people jobs. Because yes. Yes. everywhere you go, somebody holding up a sign, yeah, somebody right. help me, I'm homeless. That's right. Some of them say they're veterans. That's right. I don't understand that yeah, because yeah. you can go right downtown and get the help you need. Yeah, that's, you right. That that's, right. that's right. That's right. Well, a lot of them are, lot lot of them are not veterans. But yeah. they just eat and they figure, they, well, if, that, if that's a trick that can get, get me 5 or $10 yeah. to buy me some wine. Yeah. I'm cool. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, and because now you, and in fact, you make a good point there, because now as I think about this thing, even when I was running inspector, I said, maybe what I should have done, maybe create some kind of a crisis or something. You got to do something. And so I, so I said, well, now think about it. Think about it. When we start, to, when I started talking about that, 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 uh, that, that uh, Wapato piece. Yes, sir. Remember that? Yes, sir. I said, well, look, and then a lot of the folks was coming back and saying, well, we don't want to go in no jail. That's a jail, and you know, and my civil rights. Wait a minute, something's wrong here. This is a place where it's got a roof over your head, you're dry, you can eat, That's you right. can you can take a bath. That's right. You know what I'm saying? You, you and you got some some source of security. Well, as far as the as far as the the doors, if they got bars on it, you can just put a piece of sli <laughs> a plywood on it That's and right. put a door, a regular door knob on it, right. and you can lock it. And but you got security. Yes, sir. I mean, give me a break. And you're not paying nothing. See? So so I said, well, no. Well, maybe what we may need to do, like I said before, I still feel very strong about that. We need to take those people all off the street, take them down to Rocky Butte, and vet them. They say we got 8,000 people in Portland. I mean, numbers run all over the place. That 8,000 is for it's the homeless. number. Yeah, they're homeless. But you got a lot of a lot of money behind that. They got to have that number. They <laughs> say right. Your pharmaceuticals and all that other good That's stuff. Right. They gotta, so they got to keep getting their program. Everybody got to eat, right? And I'm saying they're fine. But I'm saying if we want to solve this problem, we got to take them off the street and vet them. And if we have to call the National Guard and call up the governor and say, look, we want you to put some tents over there on those grounds over there because there's a lot of ground there. Got me? 
And you know, we've been through that, that kind of thing. We, we, I've lived in tents and stuff like that in the military. Trump food went, there. And, Trump went uh, against status quo. He you, create, you, you, can create a, you, you can create a condition, Bruce, no. and man, you can save Paul. But check this out. Check this out. So I'm just saying, well, maybe what, what should happen, just to really get it on their mind, and I want you to think about this. All I've been doing is getting the number, 8,000. Then I look at I'm, I'm sitting up there, you know, I'm looking at Safeway and, and I'm looking at the homeless there and whatever. I see the cop coming in every so often and pick up a homeless for stealing some meat, yeah. something to eat. Yeah. What do they do? Take the guy, go down to the institution, they house him in the institution. First thing he does, he so uh, get rid of the clothes. They give him a good bath, <laughs> right? Right. If he's got any medical problems, you give him to the doctor. The doctor clean that up, right? Right. 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 Then they give him a bed, right? You got clean clothes, got a clean sheet, the whole nine yards, right? Right. And he's secure too, because you can't be beating up on him or nothing, right? right. Okay? Right. Nobody can steal his rack or this, that, and the other, right? Right. Okay? Well, and then he can and then at the end of the morning, he can sit down there and, and, and then play dominoes with the fellas, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then Go, then he got to go up before the judge. The judge say, well, you know, well, I, did, I stole some meat. Said, okay, fine, that's six weeks. He gets six weeks, right? At the end of six weeks, he's good and clean and everything else. And he go back on the street. And he said, well, but he go back to the same spot. Right. He said, well, guess what? I don't have to pay no rent. Right. I don't pay no light bills. Right. And whenever I get to the point, I, I feel like I'm getting clean. I want to get my teeth fixed. So, so the name of the game what if 8,000 people went to, went to one of them stores and took some meat out and said, well, I'm, I'm guilty. Take me to jail. You, you, you get my drift? I'm definitely agreeing with See? you. See, so, so the name of the game, we don't have to do that. What we can do is that we can do a Wapato and vet those people because a lot of those people, don't do respect, all they need to do is be given a job and give some sense of direction so they can go right back to home. Because some of them just go on the street and then go right back to home. Right. Go pick up the tennis shoes, get up their food, get some food, get in line, if you will, get a basket of food. They never say, well, wh wh where are you sleeping on the <laughs> at home? We got to take a picture of you on the street. No, they right. just give them the basket. That's right. And the people who give them the basket writes it off on the taxes. That's right. See, That's see right. So, so, so as a system, we need to do something... We got, we, we're in a very serious situation right now. So I'm just saying it's going to take us all. That's right. But we got to get this, because this thing is stressing a lot of people out who didn't even commit a crime or who are not even sl sleeping on the street. It's stressing them out. We're in jail. That's right. You can't even walk down the store and get you some milk at, let's say, uh, 12 o'clock at night. Or you can, can't let your wife to go out there just to walk to the street and get some, or tell the kids to go down there without being trying to somebody trying to rape her or, right. or, or the kid getting jumped on and trying to take him out of this that and the other right. and homeless so person gets taken up and say oh well he he's mentally ill and then we then we then oh well, fine but then we put him out on the street with some pills and he's right back we're doing it again so so it's just a, it's a cycle thing and everybody we need to get those money folks who are making money off that situation <coughs> and give them some different types of jobs so they can continue to eat but right now, we got a situation here. We've developed an economy about keeping people homeless that we, we got to resolve. We can't go no more. And it's, it's hitting a lot of population. So we got a winter that's coming up here now this winter. And in all due respect, we got, we, we got, we got in all due respect, we got a mayor. You know, he's having some tough time. It's OJ I look at Voters Digest every yeah. week. I yeah. see you on there, and I look who's on your show. Yeah. I see yeah. senators. Yeah. I see congressmen. If you bring them to these town hall meetings, I guarantee you it'll make Portland a better place. Well, but think about this. They, too, have some responsibilities. They, they, they need to. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm it's going to help them, though. Yeah, it's going to help them. No, no problem. But they got to initiate some of it. Like you said, when they come on, I'm asking them basically what they're going to do. Where are the issues? That's what I do. See what I'm saying? So so, so 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 all I'm saying is that and for, for instance, here's the city hall. I mean, one area, you, you got folks protesting down there. And every Wednesday, you, you, you're supposed to come up there, and you, the people can just speak. But you give them three minutes. It takes you two minutes just to sit down. And then it takes two people for a conversation. Right. I'm saying this is what's on my mind, and you don't even share nothing. That's right. Give me something back. 
And they say, well, no, you don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I say, aid, I want you to take care of this. This, this is my area. Okay, this is my area of expertise. This is the bureau I'm handling. Give them a piece of paper. Go talk to so and so. But we're not. But we're not. But yes, we're not. Man, but man. we're not getting that. See. Yeah, so anyway, man. you know, we're having quite a discussion, and I really appreciate the candidness and the, the fact that we're able to. I'm honored because a lot of stuff in me about yeah. this, and because of your position. Right. Right. You know, I really want to talk, but we could start now. The ground must be prepared okay, before okay. corn be planted. If we started now, by the time that next election, because of the things that I a little bit that I do know, man, we're gonna get you up there because we need somebody up there to deal with the issue. Because everybody else. All they do is get election and just get the money, and you don't hear no more from them. It's time for run again. Okay. But I wish we could keep on because he, I got, I got well, a minute well, left well, on the well, show. Well, at least you gave me more than three minutes. <laughs> my man. I'm honored, brother. All right, man. We're going to do this again. Baby. Oh, yeah. we got the no next problem. Summer, we're no gonna problem. Do this again. No problem. Okay. So it's always an honor. And get out and vote. You know, we, yeah, you got to get out and vote Please right vote. now. And we're talking about education. We're yeah. talking about the school system. Because, like I said, they was teaching certain things in the, uh, in the school system. And when Bruce got on Bowler's Digest, they changed the curriculum. So in conclusion, I would like to say ye are the children of one father, provided for by his care. And the breast of one mother has given ye suck. That the bonds of affection therefore unite thee with thy brother, that peace and happiness may dwell in thy father's house. And when ye separate in the world, remember the relation that binds you to love and unity, and prefer not a stranger before thine own blood. If thy brother's in adversity, assist him. If thy sister is in trouble, forsake her not. So shall the fortunes of thy father contribute to the support of his whole race, and his care be continued to you all in your love to each other. The more Shabbat and prayer. Allah, the Father of the universe, the Father of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Allah is my protector, my guide, and my salvation. By night and by day, through his holy prophet, Drew Ali, Amen. Thank you, my brother. Thank you very much. Good show. Good show. Appreciate it. Appreciate it.